The only thing that will redeem mankind is cooperation. I think we can all appreciate the relevance of that now. But they don't belong in the newsroom! This just in, scientists discover that Canadian bacon is actually ordinary ham. With what Dr. Ashland just said, do you, do you concur? Cop enjoys watching young lovers. I don't think so. Uh, local Bobby gets thumbs up to teen suicide? That's just grossly inappropriate. This made a lot of people very angry and has been widely regarded as a bad move. Don't talk to it, Mary. Don't encourage it. That is quite a horn. Miserable bloody moments, no sense of humor. We're just like having bacon. Welcome back to the Hollywood Thumb, a movie news podcast brought to you by It's Just Two Movies, which is is also it's a it's, it's also another a podcast. podcast. Yeah, <laughs> my name is Daniel King. This is Birdman. Hi, we're about to read the news. Anne Hesh uh, unfortunately passed away. Yep, saw that this morning. We're just gonna get that sad shit out of the way. Uh, that's a that, that's pretty unfortunate. Uh, she drove her car into a into a home. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think and, she might have been under the influence. Yeah, I hadn't hadn't seen seen anything about about that, but I mean, I've not ever heard of anybody accidentally driving through a home who wasn't under the influence. It's right. weird that I have heard of people driving through houses two times. Actually, this makes three. Unless you're like an old person, I feel like old people kind of accidentally they just mistake mis- the gas, misjudge for... the carport, <laughs> <laughs> just park it right in the foyer. <laughs> no, but she uh, she drove her drove her car into a residential home. In the Mar Vista neighborhood of Los Angeles, she suffered severe burns from the car, uh, which caught on fire, and she she was in a coma for several days, and and as of today, she passed away, which is uh, very unfortunate. Uh, She does have a film that I believe is still going to be released on Lifetime called The Girl in Room 13. So it's about like sex trafficking, so everybody's on board about it coming out because, you know, we want to raise awareness of that that sort of stuff. But, you know, she, she's better known for her roles in Donnie Brasco, Volcano, uh, the remake of Psycho, Wag the Dog, but many others. I mean, Anne Hesh is in a ton of shit. How could you not mention her, well, what I would consider her most her most well-known performance? Lay it on me. Six Days, Seven Nights. Six Days, Seven Nights. With Harrison Ford. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, I don't know that I've ever seen that. When you say Harrison <laughs> Ford, I'm like, oh, yeah, <laughs> that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that that's a that that's a that's a bummer well what a loss mm-hmm. for the uh, for the acting world i also saw a news article labeled john wick chapter four everything you need to know and then okay. i just scrolled right past is it. that the name of the film john wick four everything <laughs> you need to know. <laughs> uh yeah i just kept on fucking scrolling and then yeah. i uh i started to write this joke like what 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 do, what would you need to know? Like, what are they possibly going to make different about John Wick? <laughs> He's just going to befriend everyone, and then they're going to have a board meeting? <laughs> no, they're going to hand each other weird coins, and he's going to headshot a bunch of people, and there will be some cool judo hit throws. <laughs> he'll he'll murder people in inventive ways. That's uh, Have you watched all of the John Wick films? I have watched all of the John Wicks. It's a bunch of weird secret coins, and everybody in New York, like literally one out of three <laughs> people is a secret uh, assassin. Okay. It is ju- it is action for the sake of action. Yeah, it's, I get it's it. like I... it's like a 13-year-old w- went, wouldn't it be cool if you just killed everybody in New York? <laughs> like wouldn't that be a sweet action movie? And they made it. And they made it with Keanu Reeves and Keanu Reeves is delightful in them. Yeah. Uh there's cool gun stuff in it, but that that for me, but for me personally, that that charm wears off pretty quick when it, there's three whole After movies third, of it. Yeah. Yeah. I watched the first one. Haven't watched any of the other ones. So, you probably uh, just leave it. Leave it yeah, at that. You, I think you I probably, probably will. <laughs> you probably have fair. You're like memory when you think back on John Wick. You're like that was fun. Yeah. Yeah. The other two just kind of. They're they're fine. Probably. They're the same. Yep. Actually, they're less good. I think because mm-hmm. at least there was the, the puppy, like the straw that broke the camel's back. Kind of heartstrings tears it tears at the old heartstrings yeah, there a yeah. little bit. Which of course the puppy was a metaphor for his family. I got the movie. I just didn't. <laughs> um, so yeah, that uh, that got a release date for March twenty fourth, two thousand three. Uh, John Wick Chapter 5, already in the works. Wow, because why not make more money? Well, exactly, yeah. (laughs) Chapter 4 is played as like a two-part finale, uh, which, I mean, you know, the first three made nearly $600 million gross, so... Right, they're going to keep doing Yeah, you would just keep printing them. But they're also making spinoffs of these. Uh, Why wouldn't they? (laughs) Yeah, right, yeah. There's one called, what was it called? Uh, Ballerina in the works, and they they do what what Hollywood tends to do when they need an action babe. They slap the big red button that says Anna de Armas. (laughs) (laughs) She's tied to it? 
Yeah, she's. Nice. I think she's going to lead it. Uh, there's also going to be a Stars pel- parallel series called The Continental, which is that weird hotel where everybody has weird coins and you can't kill anybody in The Continental. Huh. Yeah, see, I don't know. Because you don't I know any watched. of that. That's right, because <laughs> what would you have thought? Would I have not spoiled that <laughs> right. for you? You'd have been like, I don't know, it's probably a hotel where you go get a weird coin. <laughs> Uh, but you can't kill people there, though. It's probably like a rule, like hands off. Uh, yeah. Jesus Christ. Uh, I mean, just talk about saturation with this shit. Uh, at least in comic book movies, they they do like they tend to give different characters uh, an arc. And, and maybe that's what they're trying to do with all the spinoff series and shit. I still would watch the Anna de Armas one, though, even though I've already seen that. Uh, it's called The Gray Man. It just came out on Netflix. Um, oh, OK. And yeah. Anna Damaris just kills a bunch of people. She's she's a she's a secret badass hmm. for part of it anyway. Yeah. So I mean, that's uh, what what uh, what are your thoughts on all that John Wick and Birdman? Uh, it's probably went too far, but it's making a lot of money. Yeah, I'll still see it, and him. that's cool. I guess. Yeah. Uh, I I do like Keanu Reeves. Same. I don't think he's the best actor in the world, Mm-mm. but he doesn't really need to be. He's got a time and a place. He's very Nick he Cage. Yeah. He's very Nick Cage. He's got a time and a place. He's got his own thing. Yeah. Niche, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, exactly. That's fine. You know, like like I said, I've watched the first one. I probably won't watch the other John Wick films yeah, just because. Know. I'll watch the other ones, especially if I, I get online and everybody's like, actually, they're quite good. I'll watch it and then I'll be like, they lied. This is just the same. This is John Wick. Yeah. So really what you've got is John Wick, John Wick 2, and John Wick 2.2, and then John Wick 2.3, and then John Wick 2.4, and John Wick 2.5. I'll ask you this. And so on. They're all John Wick 2. I'll ask you this. Yeah. Do any of the John Wick films, do two or three have a villain that makes an appearance more than once? Yeah. uh, Yeah. They do? Yeah. Okay. Like, I mean, there's more than one scene with the villain. Is that what you're saying? No, does the villain carry over from two to three? Like you know. You oh, know. Mm, I don't think so. Okay. No, no, it's like oh, the council wants you dead. Oh, the uh, secret council of secret assassin people, because it's every. It's just I don't know. Maybe the government, because it's every American citizen is an assassin or whatever. Yeah, I was just curious because I thought it would be kind of cool if they did like a, you know, if they're gonna end it, do a four and five with say, uh, uh. A Mads Mikkelsen. Yeah. And he's in like two of the films. You know what I mean? It appears your hippos are not as famished as you claimed, Mr. Bond. <laughs> <laughs> Just as that Bond villain from, right. the, from the fucking Bond movie he's in. Uh, in other news, Leo DiCap. It's Leonardo DiCaprio, for those of you that don't know. Uh, he screen tested to play James Dean in an upcoming biopic because strike while the iron's hot on celebrity biopics, I guess. Right. What, uh, what do you think about that, Bird? What do you think about Leo DiCap? Playing as James, James Dean. Dean, the creator and founder of Dean Sausages. Dean Sausages. <laughs> um, Have you seen I, those low carb ones? They're called Lean Deans. Lean Deans. <laughs> I think that Leo could pull it off. He has the look. Uh, James Dean kind of looks like a, a mix of Leonardo DiCaprio and his his co star in uh, fuck. Uh, Brad Pitt. Sorry, I don't know why oh, I just yeah. like blanked there for a second. <laughs> On famous actor Brad Pitt. Right. Once upon Once upon a time in Hollywood. It's like mm. you look up James Dean, and he kind of looks like a, a mixture of those two. It's weird. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, what if? What if? What if they got Leo DiCap <laughs> and Brad Pitt, and they just did like a CGI face swap? Yeah. Where they look partial. <laughs> it's part Brad Pitt, part I'm, Leo DiCap. I'm into it. I'd be into that. Um. No, I I really enjoy Leo's acting so yeah i would probably check that yeah, out same uh I, I i i sat through some james james dean films when i was younger uh, i was into them couldn't mm-hmm. tell you for the life of me what they were or which ones i watched it's been a very very long time or maybe it hasn't but he, he did uh east of eden which i love that book yeah uh when they w- when they get to the part in the biopic where he dies in a traffic collision i i personally am hoping all these these hollywood biopic movies die right along with it um <laughs> I'm ve- you're I'm over. Like, I don't care. You're over the Elvis. I you're don't, over the Elton don't care. John. I watched. You're the, over the James Dean. I watched the Elton John one because I like. Uh, I like uh, Taron Edgerton. Oh, Taron Edgerton. Yeah, I couldn't remember his first name. Thank you. And I watched the Queen one because I like Rami Malek. Rami Malek. 
Yeah. However you say it. Yeah. Well, I've heard I, it. I do heard like both. him as well. Uh, I like him as well, and I thought it was fine. I thought he was really good as Freddie Mercury, but the rest of the movie was, I don't know, I just wasn't very interested in it. It's fine. Um, Same thing with the Elton John one. I was like, yeah, yeah I know Elton John's super famous. The, go, like, and I, going know he's, back I know he's to, kind of a queen, so that's... Yeah, going like, back to the Queen movie, uh, Bohemian Rhapsody, some of the editing editing was just not good yeah well it, they were they were forced to have equal screen time for every single band member because the band is called queen not, right not it's not Freddie, just Mercury. Freddie Mercury. Yeah. yeah so there was a big legal dispute about it being a biopic they all have equal screen time so that's why some of the editorial stuff seems off just, yeah because they were they strange. had to make it happen yeah what else you got uh let me tell you, I'm going to get a little political, uh -oh. Birdman, if you don't mind. And uh -oh. uh, I don't mind telling you that lots of famous people are super pissed about Roe v. Wade getting overturned. Uh, some studios like Netflix and Disney are sidestepping the issue as showrunners, including Jordan Peele, Shonda Rhimes, Taika Waititi, and J.J. Abrams, or J.J. Abrams, <laughs> are calling for uh, like like abortion safety protocols and just you know transparency between these companies and the creators. A couple of these these big fellows are simply just not responding or just sidestepping it all together. These people that are, are wanting this, these are the people that make the shit that makes you money. The creators, right. Right, exactly. Yeah. The, I guess the problem with that is if you're a movie director or a movie writer, you want to continue doing what you're doing regardless of what that parent company says. So if anybody else will step up and be like, oh yeah, well, like Neon, for instance... If they're like, oh, yeah, well, hey, we got you, baby. Don't even worry about it. Neon, A24. You know? Right. Well, well, yeah, we'll set that shit up. Don't even worry about it, girl. Some of the more indie. Yeah, exactly. Indie if they put heads. something in in a protocol for that, they might very well be able to snag a bunch of these these big name directors. Mm -hmm. Could you imagine J.J. Abrams making a thing for, for fucking Neon? That would be pretty sweet. I mean. Yeah, I think it would. It would be low budget, though. And you know how J.J. Abrams rolls. He's like, I'm going to need about 80 million b bajillion dollars. Well, he would probably front. I would assume he would probably front some of yeah, that. Yeah, probably so. I think they're they're holding out in the hope that it's just going to be reinstated and they can st skip the entire protocol, uh, which if they don't, it will have to become commonplace even after the fact. So that's what they're trying to avoid. Business-wise, it's not a stupid thing to do, but it, morally, those are, those are your breadwinners. Those are your cash cows. Yeah. You know? The squeaky wheel gets the oil. If that's what they want, g give it to them. You right, know? yeah. In other news, David Zaslav's reset for the like DC Cinematic Universe has confusion and speculation running rampant over the future of a dozen films and TV series currently in production. What do you think of that, what do you think of that Birdman? So th he is the uh, CEO of... Is it Discovery? It, it's it's Warner Brothers Discovery. Okay. Yeah. What we if you want a little taste of that of that rampant uh, speculation and confusion, uh, see last week's episode of the news where I speculated plenty. Yeah, I listened to it. Yeah. Um, I was talking to the listeners. I, oh. I had assumed you had listened to it. Well, I'm a listener. Yeah. Yeah. Other <laughs> than I was talking to you there, big guy. <laughs> Thanks. What do you think about that? What do you think about them like wiping the slate clean with a bunch of this shit? I guess I just don't follow it enough, honestly. I'm kind of fine with it because a bunch of it's not very good. Yeah. Like, I'm just being honest with you. A bunch of it's not really good. Motherfucker, you got Jason Momoa to play Aquaman. <laughs> you got Jason Momoa, the most, like, one of the most yoked motherfuckers on the planet, <laughs> to play Aquaman, a dude who talks to fish. And you fucking, it's not good. It's, it's not good. It's just fine. It shouldn't be just fine. You should have rewritten the script until it was fucking perfect. You could have gotten the deep. You could have just gotten a stack of comic books. <laughs> you like what you I could did have there? gotten the deep, yeah. <laughs> I saw a meme where it's like getting deep and it's just a picture of the deep from the boys and it says something ridiculous at the bottom. I was like, that's a great meme format. I'm going to bring that back. <laughs> Yeah, but I just they're if they're resetting a bunch of this stuff, I honestly I don't really care. Like my favorite DC things I've seen in God I don't know how fucking long has been the Suicide Squad, whichever one James Gunn directed. I don't know if it's Suicide Squad the, or the Suicide. It's the Suicide, it's the Suicide, Squad. Suicide Squad. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that that was that was fucking great. Uh, the Batman was uh, it was okay. It was it, fine. It was fine. Yeah. Yeah, I think I, I, th I enjoyed it. But I wasn't like, oh my god. Yeah, yes. you're not. <gasps> right. I think you're, I think 
you're right. Uh, they do need to kind of hit the reset button. I like joke. Just... I like Joker, but you, it's not like you can tie Joker. This, you can't tie the Suicide Squad to Joker. They yeah. they cannot intermingle mm-hmm. because the the voices of them are so different. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm using the word voices as hyperbole. I think. Man, I tell you what. Uh, tell me what. I'm gonna just go back to the Batman real quick. Okay. I do like Robert Pattinson as the Batman, and spoiler, I guess if you haven't watched the Batman, Robert Pattinson with Robert Pattinson. You thought that he that they just cast him as Bruce Wayne, but he also plays Batman. <laughs> Spoiler for the Joker reveal. So if if you haven't seen it, fucking yeah. skip ahead. Uh, Barry Keegan as the Joker. I was very into that. I am honestly really fucking into that. Yeah, and me too. Barry Keegan is a phenomenal actor, and I feel like he's not very well known. No, no. It's like when we watched uh, the on the our parent podcast. It's just a movies. We did the Green Knight. The Green Knight. Like, yeah. Barry Keegan. Oh yeah. Yep. So I'm kind of pumped to see more of Barry Keegan as the Joker. Yeah, so. yeah, me too. I I would be cool with that, um, but now it's like they they haven't even started any. Like they're still writing the Batman for the Batman two. Batman 2 yeah, I saw that. So you know, also it could also be some, years. some piping hot movie news for your ass. They're still <laughs> yeah, they're they're like maybe twenty twenty five. That's what they're saying yeah, at best. Which is fucked because although although I was not crazy about the Batman. The world was like, yeah, like everybody was like, this is the DC shit we're talking about, baby. It was fine for the most part. There's some things that I I didn't care for. We could talk about it another time, though. Is there anything else uh, newsworthy? Newsworthy you'd oh, like to mention? Oh, Birdman, you might be very disappointed to find out that Uh-oh. Spectrum Originals have shut down as Charter gets out of the scripted programming game. How do you feel about that, Birdman? Hmm? Gonna be, gonna be missing out on great shows like Joe Pickett, Manhunt, LA's Finest, Temple. Hmm? Spectrum. How about Beacon. <laughs> but man, I know you love Beacon. Angela Black, George and Tammy, other shows that are just the names of people. <laughs> <laughs> Spectrum had a uh, streaming service. Spectrum had a streaming <laughs> service. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Uh, yeah, so I mean, I don't know if you call that newsworthy, <laughs> but somebody out there is like, man, fuck, I really love Beacon. Wow. And then they were like, sorry, I meant to say bacon. Uh, <laughs> the food. I love bacon. Not the Spectrum original show Beacon. I, I, If I'm being honest, I've never seen any of them. I remember when Spectrum started doing this, and I remember there being good reviews for some of them. Huh. But I still never watched any, so kind of doesn't affect me. Yeah. Uh, that sounds almost as bad as the streaming service that was tied directly to your cell phone. Yeah. What was the name of that? It's, it's not a thing God, anymore. God, what was the name of that thing? Oh, uh, God, what was the name of it? It was like... Because they had Reno 911. God, it was they real revived stupid. They had, those, Ni- they had those shorts. You had to watch everything in portrait mode. <laughs> yeah. What the fuck was the name of that? I guess it is, that's a good marketing for you right there. Should have fired the marketing guy before he even got out of the gate. This was, this was what, eight months ago? I've already forgotten what it's called. Right. There were commercials all over fucking TV for it. Yeah, they, they had a show, The Golden Arm. And then there was another show with, uh, what's her name from Pitch Perfect? Anyway. The golden uh, arm. Let me look it up real quick. It's about a lady who she she gets her arm cut off and then she gets a golden prosthetic and she's so vain she won't take it off even though she's getting like blood poisoning from it. Damn. Yeah. Is that a Mark Twain thing? It, it is an old written story. It's like a folk. Yeah, uh, like some sort of folk, folk legend. Tale. Yeah. While you're looking up stuff about a golden arm, you pervert. <laughs> uh <laughs> The investigation on the set of Rust nears completion as the FBI oh, completes shit. analysis. Uh, this is like a million years old as far as internet time is concerned. But somebody, uh, somebody, that's someone being uh, Helena Hutchins and uh, also injuring the director, Joel Souza. Uh, Alec Baldwin fired a gun on the set of a movie as the script called for. And somewhere along the line, a live round found its way into that pistol. And that is, you know, that's what caused a, a straight up, straight up a, a death and uh, and another pretty severe injury. So that's that that has always been the question on that. If you remember that, because I, I just always saw that picture of Alec Baldwin standing in the desert with a white beard on his cell phone when the it's, news is circulating for it's, a bit. It's pretty. Uh, it's pretty sad. It's what, super sad. What happened? Yeah. With that and that that person was 
very inexperienced with what she was doing. Yeah. Um, as far as dealing with firearms. And I re- I think I read that the only reason she was in charge is because her father is in the industry and he kind of got her the job. I bet he feels fucking terrible. Just super shitty, man. Yeah. Uh, sh- shouldn't have happened. No. Sh- that, that shouldn't fucking happen. No, no, absolutely and not. People have called for, uh, you know, safer environments as far as like on set. Yeah. With these. I mean, that, it's, fucking, it's just crazy. Yeah. That I, hasn't I just, happened since uh, Bra- Brandon Lee, Br- Bruce Lee's Br- son. Brandon, yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah, big bummer. Um, yeah, no, no bueno. But it is good to hear they're wrapping up the investigation. I'm curious to see. I'm curious to know, as far as in the eyes of the FBI, what the fuck exactly happened. Right. Because that needs to be rectified. Yeah. Yeah, that's all I've got for the news. I, I think you said you had a couple of release dates or some movies that were coming out that you wanted to, to touch on. So I've got a few movies to mention. Uh, the first one, I'm not really sure about. I keep hearing very conflicting. Uh, I don't know if it's reviews or just because it's not out yet. Don't worry, darling. Have not, you watched the trailer for this? Not familiar with that one, I don't think. Oh, I did see a very disturbing, like, moving poster for it. And it uh, looks pretty cool. It's uh, mm. Harry Harry Styles, Harry Styles. and uh, uh, Florence Pugh. Florence Pugh, yeah. And uh, it has Olivia Wilde, and she's also the director. Really? And, and, uh, or no, she's not one of the writers. She's Yeah, so Olivia Wilde, she's directed before. Yeah. She directed, I believe she directed Booksmart. Did you okay. ever watch Booksmart? Yeah, I did watch Booksmart. It was pretty fun. It's, it's not, fun. It's as I it's, was watching it, I was like, this is not for me, obviously, but it is still pretty fun. Yeah. Yeah. It's not going to blow your mind as uh, most comedies probably won't. But Right. So there's Don't Worry My Darling. It's kind of a mystery, th- uh, mystery thriller set in the 50s mm-hmm. about some weird utopian experimental community bullshit. You're right. Not sure how it's going to turn out. I am. I, I probably will watch it. The synopsis reminds me of 12 Perfect Strangers, which is like a Hulu series, which was phenomenal, by the way. Okay. So other than that, there's a movie called Emily the Criminal with Aubrey Plaza. Okay. It's coming out soon. I like Aubrey Plaza as a criminal. Right. Uh, just real quick, down on her luck and saddled with debt, Emily gets involved in a credit card scam that pulls her into the criminal underworld of Los Angeles, ultimately leading to deadly consequences. Ooh. That looks like a pretty good one. Uh, and then the last one I want to mention is The Immaculate Room. The Immaculate? You're talking Have about you heard- this room, right? Yes. The studio? <laughs> exactly. Uh, it is... Oh... So far, it does not have great reviews, but uh, Emil Hirsch and Kate Bosworth. Oh, fucking A. I love Emil Hirsch, though. I know. The the premise sounded cool. I'll just read it real quick. Secrets and private demons emerge when a seemingly perfect young couple competes for a $5 million prize by isolating themselves in an empty room for 50 days. Like, no phones, no family, no nothing. Shit. The premise sounds cool. Yeah, but, uh, looks like so far it's not getting great reviews. We'll okay. see. Well, you know that uh, that that happens. So uh, I have been uh, Daniel King. This has been Birdman. You're still and Daniel King, though. Yeah, I am still. I, I have been. I will also continue to be. <laughs> We do urge you to check out the parent podcast. It's called It's Just Two Movies, uh, where I also am the host of that. And and a lot of the time, Birdman's on there. Sometimes we, we have we have rotating guests. Don't even worry about it. Big thanks to our uh, studio production at Blue Cheese and Bacon Studios. And for this week, that's been the news. I feel invigorated. I woke this morning. With a true to blow. Bad news, Captain. We've only got one bullet. Little about my life has been kosher ever since. Stop being such a dick. Come on, Ed, it's bullcrap. It's not that the far. It's a very naughty boy. Mr. Why, that much. Your love of the Harmon's League has clearly slowed your mind. Oh, that didn't pan out. A saucy line will not get you far with me. Good speech. Nice and short. Needs more time for drinking. <laughs> Break out the ale! He's been a thirsty! The Hollywood Thumb is brought to you by It's Just Two Movies and is a production of Blue Cheese and Bacon Studios. Both can be found wherever you get your podcasts.